Okay, so the sum of what we talked about today. Oh, yeah. No, that one, no, no, forget it. So the angular momentum of an extended rigid object is composed generally of two terms, the orbital part that is as though all the mass of the body were concentrated at a center of mass, moving as the center of mass moves, and then a spin angular momentum part, which is just the rotation about the center of mass. Torques cause changes in angular momentum. Angular momentum is therefore conserved in the absence of a net external torque. And because torque also depends on the reference point you choose, it can be very advantageous to be clever and pick a nice reference point that wipes out all the torques so that you can then conserve angular momentum. And yes, we should be very careful to specify the reference point and explain what we are doing. Any questions? Yeah, bye. Could we go over that problem again by choosing the center, our reference point to be the center of mass, of the new center of mass? Sure. So if does it have any angular momentum initially then? Yeah, it does, because it's coming in, the line of action of, of momentum passes where? Just below by about r over 2, right? So what's the vector direction for the angular momentum initially? Right, so we're now using the center of mass, and so should be out, right? So we have r over 2, perpendicular distance, times mv, and it's coming out. Well, the kid is moving at v, so the momentum of the kid that's coming in is MD, and this is before, L0. Okay, afterwards, if the reference point is the center of mass, the perpendicular distance to the center of mass is zero, so there's no orbital. L final, therefore, is only I prime omega. So we have to go through the same tongue and dance to figure out I prime, but we don't because we already did that. And it's just going to work out to be exactly the same thing. Agreed? Awesome. Anything else? Yes? Could you explain one more time um, for what you were calculating I prime, the expression inside why you have yeah. and Okay, so this is what? I? Huh? Like I with... Yeah, I of what? I of the new center of mass. I of the This is the moment of inertia of the disk rotating about its center. It's a uniform disk, mm -hmm. so then the moment of inertia is one half oh, mr squared. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not rotating about the center of the disk. It's rotating about an axis that's displaced by r over 2. So this, by the parallel axis theorem, is the whole contribution from the disk. And then this is what? The moment of inertia of the child? Yeah, of the kid about the center of the mass. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the rule? You got to sum over every mass point, and you got to include it exactly once. So you can break the sum up however you like, however is convenient, but you have to hit each mass once and only once. So in this case, I would say you have a, a big concentration of mass of where the kid is, and the mass of the disk is smeared out over 
an extended object, so we'll add them up that way. Uh, 